Today, we're going to talk about the eccentric and strange fetish that narcos have with the acquisition of exotic animals to demonstrate superiority. Last week, a spider monkey was found dressed as a cartel mascot, who apparently died in a shootout with its owner. On the other hand, a 450-pound tiger abandoned or escaped from captivity and wandered through a town in Nayarit. On the other hand, a man was seriously injured when he tried to pet a captive tiger in the area dominated by narcos in Michoacan. The latter was taken to a hospital, but he died shortly thereafter. What do you think about this strange way of showing off? Is it something exclusive from cartels? Do you think it's an impressive thing to do? We read your comments down below, but don't forget to like the video, hit the notification bell, and download the video. For decades now, narcos have wanted to show their superiority by making their luxuries evident. Among them are high-end cars, beautiful and famous women, and they've also included exotic animals and others. It's become evident that the latter are educated and they're not just their pets. They're the ones who accompany them day by day, as was demonstrated in the confrontation in which a spider monkey just died last June 16th. Sons and daughters of drug traffickers called narco juniors are the ones that are most eager to show off their ostentatious lifestyles. Having exotic animals at their command are, quote unquote, symbols of power, courage, strength, and luxury. Exotic pets have become a status symbol for young drug traffickers looking to flaunt their wealth and power on social networks. Anyone who doesn't post with these animals ain't an Argo Jr. Panthers, tigers, and jaguars are the most common. The more exotic the species, the more it attracts attention. There's data that shows that more Bengal tigers live in captivity in the Golden Triangle, Chihuahua, Sinaloa, and Durango than in India. These sons of narcos not only keep and educate these animals, but also sometimes, for example, remove the teeth of lions and tigers so that they can't harm them. They also file their claws, and yeah, just do what they can to make sure that they aren't harmed. It's clear that these people harm the animals they keep in captivity. The only purpose is to feed their ego. <laughs> no reason justifies the use or safeguarding of these animals. Moreover, the fact that the people who can keep them are narcos makes this even more abhorrent. In any case, this isn't surprising since it's been demonstrated how little empathy and consideration that they have for human life. If they care so little about human life, let alone that of a simple animal. The authority in charge of combating illegal wildlife trafficking is the Procuraduría Federal de Protección de Medio Ambiente, P-R-O-F-E-P-A. They are in charge of this activity by carrying out inspection and surveillance operations in coordination with security corporations. According to figures from this agency, between 2013 and 14, a total of 5,774 specimens were seized and 94 people were arrested. This fashion for these exotic animals generates an illegal market, which favors the extinction of some species in their natural habitat, according to Mexican authorities. Joaquin Chapo Guzman was the one who inherited this children's taste for exotic animals. It's known that he, the founder of the Sinaloa cartel even had a zoo in one of his properties. Alfredo Guzman, his son, used to post pictures on Twitter before it was cancelled. In it, he published photos of lions, tigers, and cheetahs who were placed in luxury cars. This form of demonstrating power isn't exclusive to Mexican cartels. They copied the Medellin cartel's narcos' habit of acquiring exotic animals and setting up private zoos in their homes. A clear example of this is the Napoli's Hacienda, which was one of Pablo Escobar's best-known properties. Pablo Escobar was an animal lover and therefore had a collection of 200 exotic species. The former drug lord had rhinoceroses, elephants, giraffes, zebras, and hippopotamuses born in Africa, which he brought illegally to Colombia from Africa. In accordance with the codes of the traffickers' aristocracy, Having a private zoo was a prerequisite for being part of the select circle of wholesale traffickers, said David Saucedo, security analyst. In some cases, these animals had more sinister uses. Some bosses, such as Herbierto Lascando, leader of the Los Zetas cartel, acquired an exotic fauna to torture or to disappear their victims. Several of their enemies were devoured by tigers or crocodiles that the Zetas had in their breeding grounds, said Saucedo. Also, in the poverty-stricken state of Guerrero, which is affected by poverty and the operation of cartels, it was reported that an armed group was feeding the bodies of its rivals to its tigers of Bengal. 
According to what was published in a well-known Mexican newspaper, the local prosecutor's office carried out an operation in the municipality of Quechultenango, where the group Los Ardios operates. Some belongings were confiscated, but the most striking thing is that this group had three tigers locked up. These exotic animals were used to eat the bodies of hitmen from rival groups or kidnapped people. In this way, they left no trace. On June 14th, a confrontation took place between alleged members of La Familia Michoacana and security forces. The confrontation took place in Texcaltitlan, state of Mexico. The confrontation left 11 dead and 10 detained. The detainees include both men and women, and eight of them have already been sent to penitentiary centers to resolve their legal situation. Four people were also injured. Among the victims was a spider monkey dressed as a hitman, wearing a bulletproof vest, military-style jacket, and a diaper. When found, the small primate was hugging the chest of a young man in his 20s, who was apparently its owner. The prosecutor's office of the state of Mexico confirmed that the primate's death was caused by the operational actions carried out by the agents of Texcatitlan. A necropsy of the animal will be performed by a specialist veterinarian from the Faculty of Veterinary and Zootechnics of the Autonomous University of the State of Mexico. Also, the personnel of Servicios Periciales de la Fiscalia de Ilomex will carry out the corresponding investigations that will keep abreast of other expert evidence to determine if the ownership of the spider monkey comes from the trafficking of protected species or any other illegal activities. This little monkey had its own corrido, the Mexican folkloric ballad, often in honor of drug lords. Life is too short. It wasn't the monkey's turn to die, said one of the verses published on the social networks. This corrido narrates the events in which the animal died and how it was identified minutes before. This video lasts a little over two minutes, and it begins by saying, It's a very short life. The guy was not his turn. Someone stole his story, because he came to triumph, and he shines in so many things. Last June, the Federal Attorney's Office for Environmental Protection said it confiscated a tiger in Tecuala, Nayarit, on the Pacific, near the border with Sinaloa. The office said it acted on reports of a Bengal tiger of 450 pounds, roaming the streets of Tecuala. It also stated that, it was someone who illegally possessed the animal. These reports were based on a video posted on social networks showing a woman screaming when she encountered a Bengal tiger on a residential neighborhood street. The competent authority said that the tiger's fangs and claws had been removed. And you can see below how a man nonchalantly places a rope around the feline's neck and takes it away without any trouble. Owning a Bengal tiger isn't illegal in Mexico, as it's not an endangered species. Exotic species can be pets as long as they're authorized by S-E-M-A-R-N-A-T. It must also be demonstrated that the animal in question cannot roam freely, and it must be guaranteed dignified and respectful treatment in accordance with a management plan that must be approved with the secretary, according to the general wildlife law anyways. In any case, criminals usually obtain these permits illegally. Probably the most tragic story is the one in which a man was allegedly feeding a Bengal tiger and was attacked by the animal, which bit his right hand. The incident was recorded and the man who was feeding him was approximately 40 years old, and he was presumed to be his caretaker. This unfortunate event happened in the town of San Francisco Pereban, municipality of Pereban, state of Michoacan. This area has been dominated for a lot of years now by the United Cartels and the Jalisco Cartel. In the mentioned video, the man calls the tiger to the side of a fenced enclosure. The man stands outside of the enclosure and appears to feed the animal with one hand while extending his other to pet its neck. Right after this, the man then screams in pain as the tiger swiftly turns and bites his outstretched arm. The animal then wounds both of his arms. Authorities in Michoacan confirmed that the man died days later in the hospital. Local authorities are already investigating the ownership of the animal to find out if he had the necessary permits to keep the feline in captivity. It's presumed that it's not the only exotic animal that he has. He's also got a lion and even a crocodile. What do you think about this way of treating exotic animals? Do these criminals and their twisted minds really care about these animals, or are they just an object to show how important they are? We read you, so leave your comments down below, and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. See you next time.